Hi guys, welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now I've created a few videos on the Radio Berry over the years, and if you do not know what a Radio Berry is, well, in short, it's a purposely designed HF receiver and transmitter software defined radio, all designed into a Pi hat, which neatly sits on top of a Raspberry Pi. Now originally designed by Papa Alpha 3 GSB from the Netherlands. It's based on an analog device's AD9866, which is actually a 12-bit broadband modem, which has been repurposed as a direct down conversion and a direct up conversion SDR transceiver. Now this little radio card uses an Intel Cyclone 10LP FPGA, and by downloading the appropriate software from GitHub, the FPGA can be programmed extremely easily. Now in this video, we'll go through installing the software on the Raspberry Pi, including Pi HPSDR, and then connecting to the radio berry across my local area network, and then using applications such as Thetis and SDR console to control the radio berry. The hardware shown here is almost a complete solution. It includes a five inch color touchscreen, a Raspberry Pi 4, and of course the radio berry itself. You can buy the Radio Berry on its own if you already have a Raspberry Pi and screen, or if you don't want to use a screen and just use it across the network. Now what's not included is a filter system or RF power amplifier, so that's something that you may need to add if QRP is not your thing. Now this particular kit, where you get the Raspberry Pi, the screen and the Radio Berry, it doesn't come with an operating system. So the first thing you need to do is image an SD card or micro SD card. Now the SD card size that I use is 32 gigabyte, and to be honest, that'd be perfectly adequate. The easiest way to write a Raspberry Pi operating system to an SD card is to use the official Raspberry Pi imager software, which you can download online for free. And once it's running, you just need to select the Pi model and then select the operating system. Now here I chose the latest 64-bit operating system which at the moment works perfectly with the rest of the install procedures that I'll show you in this video. Now lastly, choose the SD card in which you want to write this image to. Of course, you need to have this plugged into an SD card adapter, which is plugged into your computer for it to show in this list of available SD cards. Now when you click the next button, you'll be asked if you want to apply some OS customization settings. I would recommend doing this as it makes life easier once we get the OS booted on the Pi. So first, provide a host name. Now you can set this to anything you want, but Radio Berry would be a good choice for network identification. Set a username and password, and for this it's highly recommended to use Pi as the username, at least for now. And this is because in the past I've had troubles with the Radio Berry installation scripts where the username was something else apart from Pi. If you're going to plug the Pi directly into your network via an Ethernet cable, then you really don't need to enter the wireless configuration here. But if you do want to use the Wi-Fi network, then you can enter the SSID and password for your Wi-Fi network here. And when done, just click Save at the bottom, and on the next screen, just press Yes. At this point, the image will now be written to the SD card. Now, depending on how fast your SD card is and your SD card reader, this may take a few minutes to write and verify. But once done, you can eject the SD card safely using the eject feature on Windows Explorer, assuming you're using Windows. And you can now put the SD card into the Raspberry Pi. Now to install the Radio Berry software, i.e. the software which programs the FPGA and provides access to the Radio Berry on the Pi, we need to use a terminal application to enter some commands. Now if you're using a keyboard and mouse on the Pi, then just open Terminal. If you're wanting to perform this across the network, then you'll need the IP address of the Pi, which once booted up should appear in your router's device list. Now I'll use an application called Putty, it's a free application online, and I'll use this to connect to the Pi via SSH. Now this will bring a terminal window up where we can enter some commands, but first you'll need to log in using the username and password that you set up when creating the Pi OS image. The commands themselves will come from a GitHub page, which I'll link below. Now there's no point in me speaking out the entire commands as some of them are quite long, but easy enough to copy and paste from the GitHub page into the terminal window. So cd forward slash tmp 
and then copy and paste the wget line. This will download the installation script from GitHub. Now we now need to give the newly downloaded script permissions to be executed, and this is the command to use. We can now execute the installation script by typing decimal point forward slash radioberry underscore install dot sh, and then just press enter. Now you will be presented with a question asking you to choose which Cyclone version you have on your Radioberry. Just look at the largest chip on the board and you will either see something like CL016 or CL025. Now for me, mine was CL016, so I chose option one. After pressing enter, the installation script will continue. Now this process may take a few minutes as it downloads the required files from the internet and then compile any of the applications that it needs. Now one of the last entries that it creates is a function so that every time the Raspberry Pi is powered up, the Radio Berry background service is ran. Now at this point, I'd recommend just to reboot the Pi and you can trigger a reboot by typing sudo reboot now and then press enter. Once the Pi is rebooted, we can now test that it's working by using an application called SDR console which will connect to the Pi and Radioberry across my local area network. Now I have an HF wire antenna also connected to the RX port on the Radioberry Pi hat. The Radioberry identifies as a Hermes light SDR transceiver, so within SDR console you can open the definitions page and search for Hermes light. Assuming you don't have any other Radioberries or Hermes light on the network, only one will show up which you can then add as a definition. Once you've added the definition, select it again from this screen and then click the start button. And then SDR console will now start to show signals being received. Okay, I got that Nick, a long end fed wire, so to speak. Well, Nick, it's doing the job, it's, it's tough. It's tough, you're about five and two, five and three. I've got some noise here, Nick, but it's doing the job. Congratulations on 25 watts. Uh, Nick, we're using 300 watts, and the antenna is a four element cubicle quad up at 65 feet, so that's the story. Nick, I'll say seven three, I'll say good morning from Australia. Now that wasn't bad, the first signal received was actually from Australia on 20 meters. Okay, so maybe you don't want to use the radio berry across the network, but you want to use the radio berry directly on the screen shown at the start of the video. Well, for this, you'll need a similar application to SDR console, but it's called Pi HP SDR, and it's a specific application that runs on Linux or Pi OS. Now, as we did with the radio berry service, we now need to install the Pi HP SDR software. Using a special script for installing Pi HP SDR, we download it using the wget command as we did before. Again, links in the description for this. Enable script execute using the chmod command like this, and then run the install script by typing dot forward slash pyhpsdr underscore install dot sh, and then just press enter. Now you will be asked whether to install WDSP or pyhpsdr. Now for this, we need to type WDSP and press enter and then just let the installer do its thing. Now it's important, but I don't know why, that you do WDSP first. Now this may take a few minutes to download, compile and then install. But once finished, we just need to run that same command again. But this time type PyHPSDR and then press enter. Now you will be asked if you want to install the local CW option. Now I don't use CW, so I selected no, but if you do, then just type yes and press enter. This will now install the rest of the features and functions that we need for Pi HP SDR to run on the Pi. Now this part does take a few minutes, so go grab yourself a drink, have some snacks, and maybe even have a snooze. But once finished, you should see the message stating Pi HP SDR installed. So now if you take a look at the Pi desktop, whether it's on the screen or remotely via VNC, you'll see a new desktop icon appear titled PiHPSDR.desktop. If you just double click this shortcut, you'll get another dialog which will appear where you can select Execute. PiHPSDR will now start and go through some automatic configurations. The first time you run this will be the longest, but eventually you'll be presented with this screen 
which shows all of the discovered radio berries or Hermes light on the network or local hosts. Now, although I only have one radio berry connected, you will notice three listed on this discovery tab. And that's because the top entry is detecting the radio berry on the local host IP address of 127.0.0.1. The middle entry is the radio berry accessible via IP address on the ethernet port and the bottom one is the radio berry accessible via the Wi-Fi connection. Now you may not see the last one if you do not have Wi-Fi enabled on your Raspberry Pi. Now as I'm using the radio berry locally because I'm going to be using Pi HPSDR locally on the Pi, I'll just press the start button on that top line entry. If you're using the touchscreen, then you can just tap on any of these buttons instead of using a mouse. Now I'm just using a mouse here as I'm using VNC to view the Pi's desktop across the network. It just makes it easier to record. So once loaded, the radio tab from the menu allows you to choose the sample rate. 192K is a pretty decent sample rate, but up to 384 kilohertz is supported if needed. This just means the bandwidth that is shown on screen at the same time. And there are lots of other settings that you can configure to change how the display looks, altering levels for the pan adapter and the waterfall to suit your needs. Now Pi HP SDR also supports the filter board that the Hermes Light 2 uses, which was designed by N2 ADR. Of course, if you're using the screen on the Pi for the radio berry like this, then you will need to connect a USB sound card so that you can hear the received audio and also feed audio into the Pi using a microphone. Selecting the audio devices within Pi HP SDR is just as simple as choosing it from a drop down box within the menu settings. Now, another application which is quite interesting is called Spark SDR. And there's lots of information about this application available online. But one of the things that it does have, it actually has whisper transmissions built in. So to test this, I removed the antenna connection from the receive port on the radio berry and then I connected it to the TX port on the radio berry and then I activated a whisper session. And there's lots of information about whisper and what it does, but it's basically weak signal propagation. And as the output power from the radio berry is extremely low, we're talking milliwatts, it's interesting to see how far that signal would actually transmit just directly from the radio berry itself without a power amplifier. Now the output power from the radio berry is around 150 milliwatts, so it's extremely low. But after running Whisper for a little while on the 20 meter band, these are the results. Now if I'd left this running overnight, going through both the gray lines and afternoon and evening propagation, I'm sure there would have been a lot more. But with just 150 milliwatts, it's not doing too bad. The Radio Berry is fully open source, the hardware and the software, meaning you can create your very own design based on the Radio Berry if you want to. Now you could class the Radio Berry as a cheap way to start building a full blown HF SDR transceiver. And if you like to use transverters, then you could even use it as an exciter for the higher bands. Now one last piece of software to quickly show you is Thetis. Well, the Thetis version for the Hermes Light that is. And this works perfectly with the Radio Berry as it uses the same protocol as the Hermes Light. Oh, sí, tal vez es porque tengo ya el oído, la audición acostumbrada a escuchar así más, más. Now, as with SDR console, Pi HP SDR and Spark SDR, transmit is also possible through the actual Thetis application. So the choice is yours. Now, I'll leave a link in the description of where you can buy the package that I've shown you in this video. That's where you get the touchscreen, Pi 4 and the Radio Berry all together. And if you do get one, you can just refer back to this video on how to get the software installed and ready to go. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. And if you've got any questions, then please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. It's very difficult to think about what anybody's going to ask while I'm making a video. So if I haven't covered something, please feel free to ask. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you in the next one.